To call or not to call? That is the question. If you're wrong, you'll look like a chump. Uh, oh, I'll bet a jack there, anything. But if you're right, you'll look like a champ. Nice call. We call. No, we didn't. We call. No, we didn't. I still can't quite believe he is thinking about calling this. He's called with Jack High. And he's right. Hey, Mr. Bill Poker peeps, welcome to the vlog. Have I ever told you guys that I'm blessed? Okay, you guys know. <laughs> I say it all the time, pretty much every week. I am just incredibly blessed. Whew, I'm out of breath because I just played basketball with my son. Do you know what a blessing that is? A 21-year-old kid wanting to play with a 56-year-old dad? Just incredibly blessed. I'm just, me and Billy are little mini-me's. We both like to have fun. We love poker. We love to play basketball. We love to go to church, Bible study. I just am so proud of Billy, and I'm so thankful that he still wants to do stuff with the old, the old popster. So, just incredibly blessed. So another thing about Billy that's the same as me is, either he has the leak or he's on the other side, but never bluff a player who's unbluffable. That's a lesson for this week. Hey, I will tell you guys, this vlog is gonna be short this time because we're heading out to Vegas on Friday and I'm planning on putting another one out either on Friday or Saturday with a prequel to our World Series events. So with that, let's get to some poker. Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a quick update on how I'm doing in my Wednesday night poker league. I am doing extremely well. Uh, we had our World Series of Poker contest. I came in second, but first and second both got $1,500 entries, um, and then third through sixth got 1000 so I got the big prize in that. Uh, I'm first in kills for the year. Um, for the season, which is the second quarter, I am in fifth place. However, first through fifth are all within $60 of each other, and there's a huge gap to sixth place. So I say essentially the first five of us are tied. <laughs> For the yearly standings, I'm in second, um, doing very well there. And I have made eight out of the last nine final tables. Here's my finishes. Bottom line is I'm doing really, really well in my Wednesday night poker league. Uh, it's a great league. It makes me better, um, makes all of us better, and we're going to do well in the World Series of Poker. That vlog is coming up in just a few days. So I played with the Jack on Saturday night, 1-3 game. Um, it was an interesting game. It wasn't uh, terribly aggressive, although it got more aggressive as the night went on. Uh, there was a vlog watcher named Tom at uh, my table. Tom emailed me later and said he'd buy me a beer next time I'm in town, so I'll take him up on that. <laughs> So there was four players at the table that were very interesting. Seat one was a young guy. When I first went to the table, I thought I could push him around. I didn't think he was very good. He turned out to be very good. Uh, seat two was a woman. Uh, she played very, very tight, although she made a couple of nice bluffs. Uh, seat three's name was Greg. Greg was young, uh, pretty aggressive, pretty bluffy. He, in fact, and he liked to show his bluffs. He also was getting quite angry at the fourth very interesting player, which was seat eight. He played every hand, didn't matter how much. Three seven, queen deuce, jack eight. It didn't matter if he, if it was, if long as it was sixteen dollars or under in this one three game, he played it, and. Our friend Greg, who was on my right, I was in seat four, uh, got sucked out on by, uh, by this guy quite a few times and was just getting angry. And Greg said, yes, I'm being an ass and I should just shut up. And I kept thinking, Greg, stop tapping the glass, man. If somebody wants to play really, really badly, let them play badly. Tell them nice hand. And again, he said he knew he was kind of being a jerk because he was kind of berating the guy every time that he lost. Uh, <laughs> which you shouldn't do. Let those players play, let them have fun, they're eventually gonna lose their money to you. Anyhow, three of these hands that I'm gonna share with you guys are against this Greg. The first hand was early on and Greg had already shown that he was quite bluffy. Um, he had shown two or three bluffs and he liked to show his bluffs. And I knew that he had the ability to bluff on a lot of hands. So I have $265 in the plus one. I have king of spades, 10 of spades, the under the gun limps, I go ahead and limp, the cutoff, limps, the big blind makes it 15, and all of us call. So the flop with 61 in the pot comes 10, 9, 7. 
The big blind leads out for 25. The end of the gun, which was Greg, makes it 60. Now I had seen him bluff numerous times and I just thought he was weak. So I have top pair with a good kicker. Don't have much, but I bump it up to 160. He comes back to the big blind. He kind of tanks a little bit, but folds relatively quickly. And then Greg tanks for a long time. He eventually folds and he shows 8-9 for open-ended with one pair. Of course, I had a better pair, so I was ahead. Um, I did show my 10. Next hand, against Greg again, I have queen of clubs, six of clubs. I have $270 in the big blind. Uh, there's three limpers. The cutoff makes it six. Hmm. The small blind Greg calls, uh, I call, and then two others call. So the flop with 33 in the pot comes six of diamonds, five of clubs, six of spades. I flop three sixes. It check checks to the hijack, who is that just was really not a very good player at all, the one that played everything. He goes all in for $50. Folds to Greg on the small blind. He now shoves all in for $400. I absolutely think he's shoving here because he wants me out of the pot. So I snap call with my six queen. Ugh. Greg turns over six ace. The board runs out with a three and a seven, and I lose my entire stack when I flop three sixes. Mm, tough, tough, tough. So the woman in seat two was a pretty darn good player. In fact, that Greg said he was surrounded by the two best players at the table in that woman and me. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he's giving us too much credit. I don't know. <laughs> maybe not, maybe we were the best, I don't know. Anyhow, I had $425, I had pocket fives in the MP1. The end of the gun, who was the tight uh, female, uh, makes it 15. Um, the plus one called, I called. So there's 47 on the flop, and it comes queen of clubs, seven of spades, five of diamonds. Yes, flop sets make money. So she leads out for 30, the other guy folds, I make the call. The turn with 107 in the pot is a three of hearts. She bets 60, has about 160 back. Uh, I decide, I kind of hem and haw on tank, and geez, you got a set of queens, and but I make the call. I didn't really worry about a set of queens. I know I'm good here. So the river, three of diamonds. She bets 100. I shove all in for her effective stack of 170. She does not like it at all, and she thinks, what could you possibly have here? She asked me, how can I possibly have a three in my hand? Uh, <laughs> Of course, I don't have a three in my hand, but it's only $70 more. So she makes the call with ace queen and my full house wins. I am under the gun with $725. I'd work my way back up to even with king of hearts, jack of hearts. I make it 15, the P1, the button, and the big blind all call. The flop with 61 on the pot comes six of hearts, six of clubs, nine of diamonds, and we check around. The turn comes the three of hearts now giving me the nut flush draw it's checked to me i make it 30 the p1 and the big blind call so the river now has 151 in the pot it comes the ace of clubs giving me the nut flush uh it checks to me i make it 60 and then the p1 shoves all in for 214. this guy hadn't played very many hands the other guy folds i have no idea what i beat I can't beat anything. <laughs> He's got to have a full house. He can't. Would he ever do that with just a lone six? I would seriously doubt it. So anyhow, but there was enough money in the pot that I made the crying call. I cost me $140 because he had pocket nines for the full house. That was absolutely the worst hand I played all night. I should know better than to call that. All right, I'm in the big blind with pocket sevens. I have $500, I've down $200. There's a straddle for six on the button. The small blind Greg makes it 36 immediately. I make the call. The flop with 78 in the pot comes queen of clubs, eight of hearts, nine of diamonds, and we go check, check. The turn is the six of clubs. He leads out for 60, I'm not convinced. I'm open-ended also, so I make the call. The river with 198 in the pot comes the jack of hearts. He bets $130 and I tank forever and a day. I have a really strong feeling this is either pocket queens or ace king. Now there could be some other stuff in there. He checked the flop, bet the turn when it could have come a flush draw. So there's a possibility that he has the 10 of clubs in here somewhere. Uh, that's a possibility. Ace, 10 of clubs? Sure. 
Um, but I felt really strongly that, man, this guy bluffs so much that he could very easily be ace king. But you know what? Sometimes it's tough to bluff the unbluffable. That'd be me sometimes. <laughs> so I make the call. Greg announces ace high. Holy cow, my pocket sevens are good. I was absolutely correct. I think he had ace king. He didn't say for sure, he just said ace high. And then the conversation for the next 10 minutes was, how in the world could I make that call? Um, I just felt that I was good. One thing I told the people at the table is, you cannot be afraid to be embarrassed. Uh, so you look stupid sometimes, that's gonna happen. Uh, you need to go with your read, go with your gut. I did it, and it was right this time. So the last hand we'll go over, I'm in the hijack with $700, I have ace queen, it folds around to me, I make it 15, and a very, very tight player on the button makes the call. The flop with 34 in the pot comes king of hearts, queen of clubs, six of hearts. Uh, I check, he makes it 20. I can't fold to just one bet, uh, so I make the call. The turn 74 in the pot comes the seven of clubs. I check, he makes it 40. Oh boy. It's certainly possible he has a king, he's a pretty tight player, but I make a call. The river with 154 in the pot comes the nine of diamonds. I check, he bets very, very small, $45. Man, I don't like it. I think he is just milking me. He was a good player. He had seen me call down other hands when somebody made a big bluff. Uh, so he sure seems like he's trying to get value, but for $45, I can't go away. So I make the call and I hide my face and he says, Good call. <laughs> Holy cow. He had five eight of hearts. So even though he's a very tight player, he didn't play tight on this hand. Um, he was just trying to take it away from me. Again, he was a good player, so he could have easily done it. Uh, I told him later that, man, the $45 bet almost made me fold. It was so small and so valuey that I just didn't know if I should make the call. I told him that if he had made a big bet, $140 or something, that I may have thought more about it being a bluff. I think if he'd have made it 65 or 70, I would have folded. It would have been still small enough that it would have been valuey. I think he was just a little bit too small on his value bet. Anyhow, don't try to bluff the unbluffable, Mr. Bill. So there are some sessions where you just feel right, that your reads are right, uh, what you're doing is right, and that's how I was on Saturday at the Jack. I had that one horrible hand, but for the most part, my reads were right on the money. I was thinking clearly, and you sure do a lot better when that happens. So a good session, a fun session, a profitable session. You like those. Again, my reads were good. I'm hoping that I can think clearly during the World Series of Poker like I was this time. Get enough rest, eat right, and be mentally prepared, and it'll happen. So that's going to do it for this vlog. Uh, Vegas, here we come. We will be there on Friday. Look for another vlog, either Friday or Saturday. It's gonna be a special one about my Wednesday night poker league coming to the World Series and Billy and I going to the World Series. We're staying at a condo right across the street from the Rio. I've never done an Airbnb before. This is gonna be the first time. I'm looking forward to it. And so you guys look for us at the World Series. Say hello if you see us. And you have a fantastic, I guess not week, just a few days before my next vlog comes out. And you guys be blessed. And I will see you guys real soon. Bye.